a bit like our grandfather here, and you would like you to tell us about your experience. Can you do that? Are you okay? Uh, yes, 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 I'm fine. Okay. I'm fine. I want to tell if there was a slide on the screen. Pass me. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> what do you want me to speak about? Uh, I think we discussed that already. You don't remember. <laughs> We're here because we want to reconnect with the collections in storage. Ah. Ah, because generally, when, when I'm called uh, to remind what the people ask me, oh, grandfather, uh, can you tell us how it was uh, 50 years ago? And uh, a lot of people ask me, oh, how was it in climate control? Alors I'm explaining what is a wheeling psychrometer and so on. And... Uh, uh, light or, or education on preventive conservation. So, wh what do you want me to speak about? Okay, alors, you remember one time we discussed, you would like your experience about storage, storage collection, ah, storage. Ah, storage. Can storage. you do that? Of course. Can I let you hear? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And now, let's be serious. I just had 75 years old. The years are behind. <laughs> now I am 25 in front of me. And I'm ready to speak about climate control. No. <laughs> so, reorganizing museum storage, an 80 years journey and still way to go. Storage. Storage is a word which is quite often used. It's, uh, we all agree, I think we need to have a definition because in my travel I have realized that most of the people have several words to use storage and the content of those places are not the same. So uh, I will define it a room in a museum where the objects which are not exhibited yet are registered, maintained in good condition mm, and ready for study and or exhibition. And this space uh, can be called in English storage, deposit, storage room, it can be called reserve, deposit, magasin. It can be called in Spanish reservas, depositos, almacenes, and several other names. I have to, if we go back, the first time I heard, I, I knew about a conference which speak about courage, storage, it was in Madrid in 1934, and it was organized by the League of Nations. It was uh, on exhibition, uh, on museology, and at the time it was called museography. One of the fathers of conservation was present, Harold Plenderlis, who was my fir first boss, and in the publication, in the eighth uh, chapter, they were speaking of organization of dépôt, réserve, et collection d'études. You see already three words for the same place, which is, has to be clarified. In this, the, this, this chapter, it starts by les, les collections, les dépôts conservés dans les collections sont réunis dans un endroit approprié ou malheureusement souvent peu approprié. Vous savez qui sait lire entre les lignes, hein, entre ce approprié or unfortunately often not appropriated, it shows clearly that they were already at the time a problem. 
Now let's go now. We make a jump uh, after the war, 1968, UNESCO was created. And in the publication, one of the main publications of UNESCO was uh, done in 68 was the conservation of cultural property. In fact, it's the first book I read. And there was, of course, uh, uh, you see, this is a book, and it is said with special reference for tropical condition. It's UNESCO. And in the chapter, one chapter, you had lighting, air conditioning, exhibition, storage, handling, and packing by Norman Brummel. And in this, I read it through. There was not a word about storage. They speak about climate. They already say that it must be stable. They say about uh, change in climate and so on and so far. But storage, no even if it was in the title. It seemed that it's just a place where you control the light, the air conditioning, very important. You know, it's not automatically. Huh? So that was said, storage, but not put into practice. Then, eight years later, there has been really the first main conference specifically on storage. 1976, Washington, at the Smithsonian, Paul Perrault, who was at the time assistant secretary for museum, managed to organize a conference of ECOM on storage. It's really the, the starting point. It's the starting point, and uh, I had the chance to be, uh, ref uh, to be at this conference I was not at the, I'm sorry, I've not said so, but I was not at the conference in 36 in Madrid, not so crazy. <laughs> but I, wa I was at this conference, and uh, yesterday I had been speaking a lot, half an hour, uh, with Paul Perrault in the States, and I, I asked him, I was telling that this was a conference, and he was extremely happy, he's about 90 years, years old now, and we spoke about how it has gone. And uh, there was, uh, we were about 40 people coming from the main museum in the world. Most of them had uh, professional storages. And at one moment, at the conclusion, the room was about this size, one quarter of this room. You see, we were in square shape, people all around here. And at the conclusion, the last day, uh, the one of the, uh, uh, there was a recommendation. We'll do recommendation here, of course. There were recommendations. And it was said that uh, important uh, of a museum should have uh, good quality storage. And one participant close to me, called Ma Pascal Macambilla from Congo, said, ah, yes, but you say nothing about uh, develop, uh, developing country, could something could be said. And every real, very, very, of course, we should have done it, we're forgotten. It was correctly, it was incorrect. It was uh, politically incorrect. And uh, so we say, yes, yes, of course, we will do so. And a gentleman who was, I remember this side, at the time he looked, he was a hair doctor professor from Germany. At the time he looked for me very old. Nowadays, not so much. <laughs> but you see, everything changed with life. And uh, he said, when this proposal was made to have something about underdeveloped country, the country, he said, I fully disagree. I don't look at him, ah, that was politically incorrect. And what do you mean, said the chairperson? He said, I will tell you. It's not a question of developed country or developing or under country. It's a question of developed museum and underdeveloped museum. And I know developed museum in underdeveloped country and underdeveloped museum in developed country. Everyone realized that we agree with this. And he said, and I will add, I will tell you 
I know museums where there are departments which are developed and the next department which is undeveloped. And undeveloped means, means storage which are not professional. So this statement for me is extremely important. I imagine that all of you can read. So it's a, it's a developed audience. Good. So after this meeting, uh, the Smithsonian, which has already launched, sto started to think of reorganizing their storage. I will perhaps make the story uh, short now. Uh, they create this museum su support center because Mr. Perot wanted his Conseil d'administration to create a new storage. And no one accepted around the table. And one day was so fed up that he gave carte blanche to one of the photographer, carte blanche to one of the photographer, and say, make a complete survey of the most awful thing you have seen in our storage. And at the next meeting of the Conseil d'administration, every administrator had a book like this of the situation, and they decide finally to create this center where today there are 55 million items located in this place. Nineteen seventy-seven publication of, just after this, it was asked to UNESCO to make a second publication, Museum Storage by Werner Johnson. This book, you see, done by architect, give only solution for furniture. And we will see that it's not only a problem of furniture, the problem of the storage. There are many other problems. But it was only on furniture. And again, what is written there, read it, in the introduction. Inadequate attention in the past and in most cases, still receive inadequate attention. 19, seven, in fact, 78, eh? probably more harm has been done to museum collection through improper storage. It was finally officially recognized by UNESCO, publication of UNESCO, and they add, it is apparent that there are major difference between the need and resources museum in more technical advanced country and those in developing country. And this is wrong. It is the same everywhere. But this is politically correct, UNESCO. I had the great shock when in 1982 with a, with a conference of ECOM at the Egyptian Cairo Museum, I had the great opportunity, uh, it's an exceptional expedition that I did in Egypt. I was authorized to do an exhibition in the storage of the museum. Uh, it was, I said, it's an exhibition, expedition, because there are more than 100 rooms, which are like this, you see. If there is no light, it will be, if in a technical point of view, it, it can remove the light from the top, it will be fine, thank you. So in room like this, and in the storage, which is here, more than 100 rooms, and <coughs> try to imagine that we were in the dark, we need to have lights, because all the electricity had been taken down to avoid theft. So there was no electricity, in, it was a labyrinth. Is it possible? 1983, ECOM proposition, after this, proposition to create an international committee on storage. You know, ECOM has uh, international committee of traveling exhibition, international uh, committee on training, international committee 
on uh, all type of, of uh, uh, collection, ethnography, metal, archaeology, and so on. So it'd be nice to have a cross one on storage. Imagine it has been proposed, it has been refused, and just a task force was created, and then after a few times it dropped. A big experience for everyone was when ICROM in 19, from 1985 to 2000 created the PREMA program, Prevention in African Museums. And there it was possible, you see, we did it in over 45 countries. And of course, when we were arriving in a museum, we were asking them, please, could, you, could we see the storage? Well, in Europe, when we were asking this, people find always a good excuse. I have all the list of excuses not to be to maintain the storage. The best one is you ask, can I see the storage? Oh, yes, of course. Hello, it's a great one. Hello, uh, Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so. I'm speaking to the responsible of storage. Okay, Mrs. So-and-so, yes. Uh, we would like to visit the storage. I'm sorry. Unfortunately, her son has fallen in the courtyard and she has gone to the hospital. But it's strange, every time I go in a museum and I ask to go to storage, the son of the person in charge of that is at the hospital. <laughs> so here we had suddenly the real vision of how were the storage. And we start to establish a strategy, realizing because each museum is different, each storage is, is different in each and at the different stage. And then, finally, some light in, Neder in the Netherlands, a general audit office make a survey of the museum uh, and create what was called the Delta Plan pour la sauvegarde du patrimoine culturel. What was it? They made a report. It's not the professional association of museums. It is the general audit at the level of the country, we do audit for school, audit for roads, audit for everything which belongs to the state. Some of you are in this room and know it very well. And incidentally, I, I thank very much Martin that I have not seen. Martin, who have, thank you Martin, who have lent me this, uh, this uh, slide. And this uh, report was done after having inspected 17 national museums, national, rich museum, the first one, where the conclusion was collection management is a very bad state. Museum fails to keep satisfactory record. Object could not be found. Record was utterly non-recorded. Record system was set up in a way and only few people know how to use it. Objects were on the floor. There are not enough space. The collection were, uh, were infested and so on. And they created the Delta Plan for five years to really <laughs> clean the way. But we were hoping that at the time, this fantastic example given by one of the European countries should have been followed by other countries. And unfortunately, it hasn't been the case. Uh, and as you can see, it is not a question of develop or developing country, it's a question of develop or underdevelop museum. In the same museum, it's a question of develop or underdevelop department. In 1908, a report had to be made in the uh, region of Lazio. You see where is the region of Lazio. Fif 52 museums. I think there is an S which is missing. So imagine. 52 museums, 47 with storage. A disaster. In Italy, in around Rome, they had to open what the, the room which was called storage. So once again, it was not a question of develop or developing country. So, so at this point, at ICROM, we realized that we could say about 60% of the museum in the world had storages in difficult condition. But we need to have confirmation on this. And we were very lucky because in 2009, UNESCO again created a program called Endangered Collection in Museum Documentation Storage. And the person who 
thought about this was a colleague, so Galia Saoma, she's now retired, she's from Lebanon, and she provided ICROM a fund to start working on this. And at this point in 2009, ICROM and UNESCO joined, because it was with UNESCO money, an anonymous inquiry on storage. This anonymous inquiry was uh, run by Simon, who is here, and who will speak to more, Simon Lambert, who will speak more about it. But briefly, in three months, we get anonymous answer from all over the world, and the result, we get 1,490 answer huh, of this survey, 136 country, developed and developing country, and three, he will give you more details, 40% say, the uh, museum say they have no management su support, 50% say no furniture or furniture overcrowded, 20% problem of flood, fire, earthquake, and 10% that theft was a major problem in their museum. So based on this information, which we're coming, you see, from this distribution of countries, Arab states, Africa, Latin America, Asia and Pacific, and Europe, and the United States, we had the same answer from Africa, uh, from Museum North, Am uh, North uh, America. And that's what started to be clear that it was a general problem. At this point, we could say 60% we had the confirmation that what we were feeling was the truth and 50%, 60% of the museum have a kind of problem. Africa, 800 objects, just some illustration, without giving names. Africa, 800 objects which had to be burned because they were infested. Arabic country, even with a lot of petrol. Asia, with no furniture. North America, South America, Europe, you see a flood. See, it's, it's very interesting, the flood. Because when you have, you see, for conservation, it's important to differ between organic and inorganic collection. So with a flood, you have an automatic separation. Oceania and so on. So it's identical result in all continents. So it's at this point, at this moment, that uh, ICROM with UNESCO create the program REORG. We group colleagues uh, from all those countries who had experience uh, from all continents. Uh, I think a good number of them are in this room. And we start to apply a methodology which will be explained, the methodology REORG, which are four points which will be explained to you by Simon later on. We did it in Argentina, we did it in Canada, we did it in uh, Belgium. Ah, yes, in Belgium, huh? we did it. Huh? Huh? Uh -huh. We did it in Belgium, we did it in, in Serbia, we did it in Greece, we did it in Iraq, we did it in China, we did it in India, we did it in New Caledonia, and we did it in Algeria, at least in an organized way. And it has been applied in a personal way by several of you who are in the room. And remember that it was called reorg, not org. We had to fight because it is different. If we do reorganization, we have to start from the same place. We don't decide, ah, oh, we should have a nice building elsewhere and so on. No, no. With the same building, the same collection, the same furniture, better organized, sometimes buying some new furniture but not frequently. So it's why it is called reorg. It's a totally different problem when you do organization. So what comes out from with my experience from those words, uh, uh, the three essential words. One, identify your problem. Identify, take time. 
take time to identify your problem. Second word essential for me, measure, quantify, quantify. And I repeat, quantify. For those who have not understood, in French, quantifier. In Italian, quantificare. Huh? Quantify. That's all. How much you have? How, what is the situation? And then, when you have this, to my experience, the big word is regroup. Regroup on the same shelf, the, co the similar collection. Identify the collection, first of all, the various collection you have. Then you regroup them. Regroup them in, on one shelf. Regroup them in one cabi cabinet. Regroup them in different, in one room that you will have specially for this type of collection. Regroup, regroup, regroup. For me, that's the three main words which identify the, uh, the method. What have we achi achieved? Oh, four little things. One, I think some collection were saved. Two, the collection are accessible now, ready for to be seen and to be exhibited and to be studied. The third thing, which is wonderful, is motivated staff. If you see the smile of the people who have reorganized their storage, they realize that they have done it, that they have saved their collection. And their collection can be used. It's an incredible achievement for a professional. Incredible. And they have smiled. And just this, by this, you see that you have done something. You have, we are here. We are in this world to achieve something. And at least we have achieved this little thing. And they are proud. And, of course, which is not written here, we have make the public understand what is a storage. Despite all those efforts, and some good example, Belgium, Netherlands, India, where we have examples. Unfortunately, no country has launched a national plan. And as long as there will not be a national plan, forget about it. You are the only one who is fighting. Why? 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 Why aren't we working on storage? Why do we abandon 90% of our collection? Have you any idea? I tried to think about it. <laughs> and why, in so many cases, it is forbidden to enter in the storage? People should be proud to show the memory of the, of, of the country. Why is it forbidden? And my reason are three. There are those who don't know the problem. There are those who don't want to look at the problem, and there are those who can't do it. And if we look at each of them, I don't know. They, those people have never entered in a storage which had problem. They are university professor teaching museology, teaching museology. They are uh, inspector, but they inspect, they are officials, they are minister who are in the museum just when there is Exhibition, and at the opening exhibition, they know very well how to use a pair of scissors. But for the rest, they don't know the situation. They never go in the storage. Or if they go, it's because it's well organized and people agree to show them the storage. But when the storage is a problem, they don't know it. And I have it at an incredible demonstration at the last general conference at ECOM in uh, July this year. People don't know what is the situation. And, and then there are people who don't want. Why do they don't want? They don't want because sometimes they have taken the responsibility of, of this museum. They have signed, but there is no inventory, or the inventory is not correct. And so they were obliged to sign. And they have signed, and they don't know what is there. But they know that there are problems. They know that things have been stolen. And they are afraid. They are afraid of what? They are ashamed, of course, to show it. And they are afraid and they are worried of possible legal problems. Because in some countries, you go to jail. Huh? 
So we wait until you retire and you ask your, your next one to sign something. We take the responsibility without knowing what responsibility is taken. And the final one, final why, I can't. Because people have not adequate training, because they have no tools to handle the problem, and because they don't have any authority. They were not asked to do it. And sometimes they have, people say they have other things to do. They have other things to do. Huh? To pay them, ah, we have the next exhibition, ah, this is coming, ah, we have to have a loan and so on. In the pro when we are doing the 15 day uh, course on Reorg, it's between 1,800 to 3,600 hours of work that we are giving to reorganize a storage. So how far we come, and I come to the conclusion, how far we come, as you can see, we look at recognition of the problem at an international level. For me, this is it. It is not recognized, or they don't want to recognize. Recognition at a national level, there are countries, I say, India, Belgium, who have start, uh, Netherlands, who start to have a project at the national level. Number of sto uh, storage which have been reorganized, okay, I would say it should be half of this and much more on the red side. Number of professionals which have been trained, yes, there are few which have been trained, but too many don't know how to do it. At the university, you don't know how to reorganize the storage. Number of trainers who have been trained, uh, extremely limited number. I would say at the world level, I would say no more than 12. Existing training material, I think we, are, we have created the training material, which is excellent. And involvement of the public, they are excellent uh, um, uh, demonstration of how to involve the public, and I think Laura will speak about it. The journey I was taking, I was inviting you to follow me, is far from the end chief. There will be more work, and I'm sure that this conference will be a key milestone in this long story of reorganizing storage. We have not to forget that we are the custodian of memory. All those objects, single, little object, large, beautiful, not beautiful, hide a message. Hide a message which have been put by men or women or group of people who have created, who have wanted to create this object. And those messages are hidden. And we have the responsibility to bring to life those objects. Make them alive. So that you suddenly look at you. This is our job. This is a wonderful responsibility. And we want to have the same pleasure when you visit storages. You are sometimes caught by some object, silent. And they want to speak to you. They want to tell them their story, tell you your story. And suddenly you are moved by one object or another or a collection. And this pleasure that you have should be shared with the public. And our responsibility is to ensure that the public share this strange feeling of contact with an object to discover the past. So at this point, I want to thank you and wish you a wonderful conference which will lead to the future. Now you know the past, now we will build on this, and tomorrow we will do a fantastic resolution on with all the experience we have, asking other people to join. And at the next conference, I'm sure we will not be 240, but we will be 1,000. Thank you so much. I would like, I would like, huh? I would like to uh, thank uh, Catherine because this has been the work of large group of people together. Uh, Catherine Antomarki, Catherine, can you join me on the, on the stage? I would like to thank Vechna. Vechna is there. She's not on the screen, but she's in the room from Vechna. 
please, I do apologize. I'd like to ask Simon, Simon who is here taking photos. I would like Alain and Islim. He is, Alain is a colleague from Africa and he is in the middle of the Pacific, so he can't be there, but he knows we are doing it. Achal, which is represented by Mrs. Go, Dr. Go, who is there in the room, and uh, Marjolaine, that all of you know. Where is Marjolaine? Here we are. Okay. <laughs> voilà. Thank you. And now I want to, you see, here we are. We have a long way to go. Huh? But as long as we know that we are together, it will be much easier to reach our objective. Thank you.